Hey everyone, welcome back to Objective Reviews. My name is Nick and today we are going to be taking a look at Things version 3. Now version 3 has been a fantastic departure from Things version 2 which kind of started getting outdated mainly because uh, it only kept getting uh, minor version updates over the past 2-3 to three years and nothing really uh, kind of changed how we used and interacted with things. Now for those of you all who don't know what things is, things is a personal get things done app. Now it, you can make to-do lists etc, make repeating to-dos and so on and so forth and get them done, like get a plan of action in there, right? But uh, it was mainly started feeling lackluster because the lack of updates were just painstakingly annoying. But Cultured Code, the company that makes things, decided to completely change that two years ago. And then they finally launched Things 3 this week. Uh, well, the week from when uh, this video comes out. So what are some interesting things about Things 3 that are different from Things version 2? Well, the very first thing that you may have noticed if you have already used Things version 2 is the design. Now, this new design is, I think, completely redone from ground up. And now there's a lot more white space, a lot more color, a lot more fluid, very, very nice animations, a lot of nice interactions. And they are finally using the haptic engine that is now available on the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus. So it encompasses a lot of things that we've come to grow to love on iOS and they've just done a stellar job with the new design so let's quickly go through all of this one by one uh, now the very first landing screen that you see uh, it's been completely redone and it focuses a lot more on the various sections of the app now this includes your today your inbox your schedule your some days your active projects and your areas now you may think that well we already had all of this What's new? Well, yes, we did have all of this already. But what's new is how you can create to-dos in them. Now you see that tiny puck at the bottom where well, you can tap that to create a new project, a new area and a new to-do directly. You can also swipe it on the other uh, left edge of the screen to create a new to-do in your inbox directly. Now this works from anywhere in the app. It's like a global thing. Now today, the today section is a bit interesting now because uh, not only does it show everything that there is for you to do today, there's also a new section called this evening. So see you've done and conquered all of the things that you were supposed to do today. And in the evening you have some plans like, you know, maybe watching Interstellar or watching Prometheus or Alien Covenant or I don't know, Bahubali. But that is not my main problem with this section. My main problem with this section is the iconography that Cultured Code decided to use for it. The moon and a faded navy blue colored moon. And I have grown to understand this icon as you know when you're using it for snoozing something or when you're using it to show a deferred task and not necessarily this evening. A setting sun would have been a better idea hands down but I'd like to understand from them their, what went on in their heads when they decided to use this icon. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe they're right, maybe it's the other way around. We'll have to ask them to know for sure. Now uh, moving on, well actually before we do move on, uh, you notice that thing in the top right corner, the tiny arrow? Well that's another interesting bit. That is an options menu and that will allow you to filter things by tags if you have and are using tags heavily which I highly recommend you do and you can add new headings if you're inside a project and stuff like that so there's a lot more contextual options in that so do go and explore those in the various sections of the app now the schedule tasks is one of the most fun parts in things 3 and the fun is mainly because of the newly designed calendar dialogue that comes up now this is by far one of the most visually appealing and the most functional date picker that I have seen in an iOS app. It is absolutely beautiful and I really really love it and I just can't get over it yet. It's been 3-4 days that I've been using this 
and I just can't get over this. It's very, very well done. It's highly polished, just like the rest of the app. Apart from my fascination with the calendar itself, there are some really nice subtle details throughout this app. For example, what you can do is swipe an item from the rightmost edge towards the left and then you can do it for more items and select a bunch of them and then maybe you want to move them or delete them or whatever you want to do or you can simply drag all of them onto a different section or into a different header or completely get rid of them from this project and move them to a different project whatever you may want to do now you can do the same thing when you swipe them towards the right from the left edge to schedule them now here's the thing the the, the tiny details that i was talking about when you pull them towards the left or the right and then you start noticing this artificial friction that the ui is giving you and it becomes harder to pull those now there is only so far you can pull those when the friction goes all the way up and you can't pull it any further and all of this physics that is in there for such simple ui makes using this app a blissful experience i should be smiling for that one <laughs> but I'm, 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 um, you have to understand that i'm really really fascinated by how well this whole ui has been engineered and the animations are just spot on there is a lot of custom ui engineering and animation work going in there and i thoroughly appreciate it now search has been there in things too and it has been one of the most uh, underutilized feature by me but the search in things 3.0 is fantastic you can just swipe down from anywhere in the app and it pops up the quick search and from there you can search for almost anything and the results well version 3 does uh, give you the results a whole lot faster and not only more accurate but the whole experience is very fluid and i really appreciate that and i can quickly move through different sections of the app using quick search as well so i if if you are going to dive deep into this app i highly recommend that you master the quick search so given that all like so much has changed in the app itself i was expecting a lot more to have changed in the today widget as well but unfortunately the today widget remains mostly the same across version 2 and 3 nothing new there quite a disappointment and the watch app has also been similarly quite the same compared to version 2 and understandably so because there's only so much you can do on an apple watch for getting things done now quickly jumping into the settings panel well uh, nothing much new here either uh, it's mostly the same you can turn on things cloud which i highly recommend you do it is one of the fastest sync services that i have ever used and apple could learn something from cultured code regarding how sync services should work and how fast they should be and how reliable they should be so kudos on that then you can turn on settings and reminders and calendars to show in your to-do view today view to do's a lot of to do's in your today view and yeah i still keep dreaming about that calendar now the price tag on this app right now is 7.99 dollars and that is an introductory pricing uh it will go up i think to 10.99 or 9.99 i'm not sure but if you're really interested in this do check it out i highly highly recommend it now this pricing of 7.99 dollars the introductory pricing offer uh well it the, the app is a paid upgrade so if you have bought things too you will not be getting this one for free you have to buy the app all over again the same goes for the mac app and the ipad app this is not a free upgrade this is a paid upgrade you're free to update them and you're free to not but that's completely up to you and you get to decide whether you want to or you wouldn't want to and the older versions will continue to work but they will not be getting any more further updates anyways guys i think uh, this is a wrap up of the review i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have hit the like button if you did not leave a comment down below and let me know why you did not like it and if you're new around here don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get a notification every time i upload a new video i'll also leave links to the apps the iPhone, the iPad and the Mac app down in the description so don't forget to check it out as well. I'll see you guys next time.